Welcome to the Mini Finney video series. This is the installation of the Mini Countryman Country Link Bracket. We will start our installation by very safely lifting the car and putting it on either jack stands or, in this case, a nice automotive lift. First step, of course, is remove the rear bumper cover and we start in the rear wheel well where we start taking fasteners loose. You can see these two hex screws are removed first. Those require a 10 millimeter socket. Then you use a small 332nd pin punch and just push the pins on through. Be careful as you start taking this all apart, you want to be sure to try to find your pins and keep all of those in a nice parts tray. So there's four expansion fasteners that you'll be pushing those pins out of. It's not necessary to take any more of them out. And then pick the flanges out and pull the collars of the expansion fastener out. And then I'm going to push out the center pin on the plastic pop rivet that holds the rear bumper cover fairing to there's a metal bracket and also the wheel well lining. You can then pull away the wheel well lining material and tuck it in behind the tire so you can gain access to where the electrical connection is. Next step is to reach in carefully and you'll find tabs that are the ends of cleats that hold the wheel well arc in place and you want to pull forward on those and pry out with a plastic pry tool at the same time so that you can release those cleats. Pulling away the wheel arc, carefully reach up and get under the head of the plastic arc retainer fastener and pop it out. Then you can take the screw out that's hidden behind the lower end of the wheel arc that holds the bumper cover. We're then going to take the screws out here that are in the opening where the rear hatch is and down in the lower corner on each side. Now we're reaching up underneath the car to get at the fasteners that hold the plastic brackets for the bumper cover. And those are kind of hard to get to. They're up in above the muffler. And there's two on each side. One high and kind of one a little bit lower. You'll need tight quarters tools and a 10 millimeter socket to get at those. You're then ready to start taking the bumper cover loose. Grab a hold of it on one side. If there's cleats in there, I use the tool, you can see, just to help I'll release the cleats on each side and then the bumper cover pulls away from the vehicle. And then disconnect all of the electrical connections for your lights and then we're, we're taking loose the TPMS antenna from its bracket. Take those nuts loose that hold the metal bumper in place. We'll take all six of those loose and remove the metal bumper off of the vehicle. Now we're going to put the country link onto the vehicle. We're going to place it on the metal studs where the bumper came off of. And it'll hang there for a minute while you put the metal bumper back over the same spot. 
and start the nuts onto the studs. You never want to use an impact tool as you could easily cross thread them. We're just using the impact tool at a low, very low torque setting to set the nuts in place. After you get those seated, use a torque wrench to set them at the factory setting of 45.6 foot-pounds. Now we're going to make our cutout in the plastic fairing piece and the hole for the receiver opening. We want to start by making a center mark. This is on the rib that's kind of the joint between the grill on the S model bumper cover and we measure out an inch each way from center on that rib. You'll be measuring out three quarters of an inch each way here at the grill opening because you want to end up with a inch and a half square opening for the receiver to penetrate through but you need to cut out two inches of clearance on the rib to allow the end of the receiver to come up flush behind the grill. So first we're cutting through on each side just through the rib to the depth to the surface of the grill on the inside and then we're kind of surgically cutting through even with the inside. Then taking the tip of the tool, we're working it through a plunge cut there, through the grill on each side, and this again is going to give you an inch and a half clear opening through that grill. You can use a sharp knife, it's always a good idea just to, to finish this cut and make precise little incisions to remove that piece out of that grill. This brushing process helps to kind of get all the little fuzzy pieces out there where you can get a hold of them and then you take your knife and trim them off nice and clean. Careful how you hold your knife, don't overcut and make cuts and scrapes that'll show on the outside. Now we're going to do the cutout so you can gain access to put the lock pin in and out for your receiver hitch. And we start by setting your combination square at five inches, make a couple marks there. Then locating your center of your bumper cover on the bottom side, make a reference line. And then measure out five inches each way from center. You'll end up with a 10 inch by five inch cutout. We're using a silver welder's pencil that can be obtained at your local welding supply if you really like this tool for the job.
after we've put our bottom reference line in place, we're going to use here a common paint can cap to dress this up a little bit and cut some radius corners in this cutout piece. Once your layout's done, then you can go back to using your oscillating cutting tool to carefully cut out the plastic material. You can do a very nice precise cut to get yourself in the right position, hold on to the tool firmly and have somebody assist you if necessary to hold the bumper cover in place. Always set the bumper cover on soft padding so you don't scratch the finished surface. So here we finish our plunge cuts and then we take a sharp knife or any other type of scraping tool and smooth up the edges. You want to make it nice so when you're reaching up in there to put your lock pin in you're not scraping your wrists on all this debris. And now the bumper cover goes back in place. Just a matter of being sure you're in the inside of the wheel arcs on both sides and get your brackets up in there, inside and up over the top of the muffler underneath. Everything just pushes back in place with a firm push. And resetting the position of the TPMS sensor. And now we're reinstalling the screw that's up and behind the wheel arc. You want to get somebody sometimes to help you push that up there just to make sure it's even. And then line up your plastic trim fastener and pop that back through the hole and then line up the cleats back into the spots they came out of. A little pressure puts those right back in place. And then you hook your electrical side marker light connector up and fit your wheel well lining material back into its original location. We'll then reinstall your hex head screws at the lower portion of the wheel arc. And then reinstall the small expansion fasteners back in their holes with the little center pins. If they fight you a little bit going back in, that's okay, you can use a flat surface of a tool and just push on it with that. The plus side end of that pin goes in first, by the way, into those uh, expansions. You look at the one in smooth one, it has a plus side. You push the plus side into the collar piece when you reassemble those expansion fasteners. Now we'll just put these two hex head screws in uh, on the corners of the rear hatch. And then put the plastic acorn nuts back in underneath the car where the plastic brackets are over the top of the muffler. These can be hard to get at and you 
We were using an extension to get to that one, but the one over the top of the muffler is a lot more confined space and you need a, a short stroke tool to get into that with a 10 millimeter socket. And then we reinstall the plastic pop rivets that are provided in the kit. And we want to get through all three holes. The one, there's a metal bracket, the wheel well lining, and this plastic fairing. And then you set the tool with your plastic pop rivet squeeze tool.